Good morning, Kids Light. Good to see y'all here again online. Um, I look forward to uh, the lesson this week. As you know, it is a new month, the month of April. And so we're gonna be learning about a new topic this month. Last month, we focused on forgiveness, how important that was, and such great lessons on forgiveness. This month, though, we're gonna be looking forward to learning about our word of the month, humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. I don't know about you guys, but that is something that is really difficult to do without the help of the Holy Spirit. And guess what? We have the Holy Spirit. Not only do, that, do we have that, we have Jesus who gave us an example on how to be humble. He came to earth, the God-man himself, and lived a life of humility. We have an example to look to. So I wanna encourage you as we jump into the lesson today that you listen up and find out, man, how can I use humility? Not only that, I want you to stand up, sing out the song we're gonna sing, dance around, and then sit down again and relax, enjoy the lesson, and we're gonna learn about humility this month. Love you guys, see y'all in a little bit. What's it like to feel humbled? Well, that's not a word we use every day. But it's humbling when you receive a gift you didn't expect. It's humbling when someone says you don't have to pay even though you messed up. It's humbling when your dad takes an entire day off of work just to spend it with you. It's humbling when you see an incredible sunset and realize that God handcrafted it with you in mind. Wow. Being humbled makes you feel small in a good way. It makes you feel grateful. When someone chooses to put you first like that, it can make your day. So why not do that for the people around you? You can choose to give up what you think you deserve to put others first. Let your sister pick the family movie even though it's your turn. Skip the pool party so you can hang out with your friend who broke his leg and can't go. Use some of your birthday money to help a family who doesn't have enough to eat. True humility is thinking of yourself less and others more. When you live your life with humility, you bring praise to God. You lift Him high, because others can see God at work in you. That's why humility is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud.
Thank you. Yep. Hello, so-and-so friends. Hey to you and all of our viewers. From near. And far. Welcome to the so-and-so show. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And we have got a show for you today. That we do. Why don't you tell them about it, John? Oh no, my friend, after you. I insist. No, after no, you. I insist after you. It's time to play a game we call After, after you. you. And now for everyone's favorite game show, After You. This is a game that requires humility, where you want to put the other person first. So, after you. What am I supposed to do? We're going to balance a cup of water on a book, on our heads. Okay. Water balancing. After you, yes. <laughs> Holding your breath in a bucket of water. <gasps> After you! <laughs> Standing on a box while being hit with a palm frond. After you! After you! After you! After you! Nope! Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Keeping a grape in your mouth. What does it have to do with humility? What? I said, what does this have to do? Oh! <laughs> After you! <sighs> Thanks for playing After You! What a great game! Was it? Yeah, I'm so much more humble than you. I put you first every time. You did not put me first. Sure I did. No, you did not. Sure I did. I, you, I, you were the first to drop the water, the first to choke on a grape. I put you first in the game, which makes me first in putting you first. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe I should have put you first by telling you to put me first first. But if you put me first first, because I let you put me first, I'd still be first at putting you first, which means, oh! It was you who were putting me first all along. Well played, Brandon. Well played. Uh huh. It's Bible story time with Kellen. What's up, guys? Not too much, Kellen. Just being soups humble. Oh, yeah? Well, then I've got a story for you. After you, Kellen. No, no, no. I, I'm humble. Thank you. Our story picks up just after Jesus shared what he knew would be his last supper with his disciples. His heart was very heavy, so Jesus led his disciples outside to a place called Gethsemane, a kind of garden with olive trees. And Jesus asked Peter, John, and James to keep watch so he could pray. The disciples sat and waited tired after a full meal while Jesus went off by himself to pray to God. It was not a happy prayer. Something very bad was going to happen to Jesus that night, and he knew it. He was so sad, so anxious, and he prayed to his Father in heaven with all his might. My Father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. But. Let what you want be done, not what I want. 
He prayed this way for what felt like an hour. But when he returned to his friends, he found them sound asleep. Couldn't you keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray. Then you won't fall into sin when you are tempted. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Three times Jesus asked his disciples to stay awake while he prayed. And each time his friends fell asleep. And then it happened. Are you still sleeping? Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is about to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go. Here comes the one who is handing me over to them. The disciples watched horrified as Judas, one of their friends, came up to Jesus, followed by a large crowd armed with clubs and swords. Greetings, Rabbi. Friend, do what you came to do. Judas went to Jesus at once and kissed him. This was Judas' signal to the armed men that Jesus was the one they should arrest. When they saw the signal, they grabbed Jesus. That's when Peter leapt into action. Peter took out a sword and lifted it. He swung the sword at the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Yeah! Go, Peter! Woo! Yes! And then Jesus' disciples fought off the armed men and brought Jesus safely back home. Thanks for the story, Kellen. Yeah. Actually, that's not exactly what happened. Oh, don't ruin this happy ending for me, Kellen. Um, so Peter cut off the servant's ear. But then, before things got completely out of hand, Jesus spoke out to the angry crowd. Put your sword back in its place. All who use the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I can't ask my father for help? He would send an army of angels right away. But then, how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. Then Jesus touched the man's ear and healed him. But Jesus' disciples, his friends, ran, leaving Jesus alone. He was arrested and taken away. To be continued. That's not happy at all. I know, but that's what happened. In fact, things got even worse after that. Worse? I don't, I don't get why Jesus was arrested in the first place. He didn't do anything wrong. True. And if he could have called an army of angels to save the day, why didn't he do that? Well, it's like what Jesus said when he was praying. He told God, let what you want be done not what I want. Sure, he didn't deserve to be arrested. And sure, he could have easily done something miraculous to save himself. But Jesus knew that God had a bigger plan, so he put God first. And really, by putting God first, he was putting us first, because we were the reason God sent Jesus in the first place. Oh, so it is a happy ending? You'll have to wait until next time to find out. Ah, rats! Or, you know, you could ask somebody how it ends or read it in the Bible. It's a very famous story. Great idea, Kellen. Thank you for the story. Yeah, thanks. No problemo. I'll see you guys later. 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 Okay, so now we know where to turn to find out how to put others first. Yeah, the after you game. Oh, no. Jesus. Oh, right. Jesus! Jesus put his friends first, mm -hmm. even though they fell asleep when they should have been keeping watch. Yeah, his enemies, too. He actually healed one of the guys who came to arrest yeah, him. He put everyone first, yeah. which brings me to a question. Go oh, reveal the question! How do you put others first? Uh, by letting them order before me at a restaurant. Oh, yeah, or by watching what someone else wants to watch on TV. Uh, oh, see, that's why... You sat through 14 hours of baking shows with me last week. Yeah, and I still don't know what fondant is. You know what, you win, friend. You win, my friend. You are definitely the most humble person Not alive. Not a competition. Well, you're number one. No. You're number one. You're number one. No, no. You know, you're putting me first, so uh, I'm number one. No, you're number two. You're number two. Talk about it together. You're number two. How do you put others first? And we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. <laughs> Can we go now? Oh, after you. Okay. Ah, <laughs> see? Now I'm number two. I'm number two. I'm number two. Wait. Ancient Romans 
refuse to use grapes as earplugs. I can't hear you. I've got a grape in my ear. I have a grape in my ear. I can't hear you. Do you oh. know what they used to use grapes for as well? Like so. When they swim. Oh, you knocked one of my, I can hear. I can hear. <laughs> 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 Humility. Man, Jesus, how great an example he gave us in this first lesson on humility. The Garden of Gethsemane, right before he was about to go to the cross, and you hear Jesus pray those words, Father, if it be any way possible for me not to have to do this, you know, I would, can you, can you do that for me, God? The Father, please that you see how desperate he was. I mean, he didn't want to be tortured and killed, yet humility wins. And he says, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Jesus put others first. And guess who those others are in this case? Me and you. He decided to put us first so that he would have to go to the cross and we could have eternal life. Incredible lesson of humility this first week. Our bottom line this week is simply this. Put others first. Put others first. It's a hard thing to do, easy thing to say, hard thing to do, but I wanna encourage you as you go through this week to find ways to put others first. Maybe your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, whoever it may be, put them first. That last cookie in the cookie jar, instead of you eating it, maybe give it to your brother, give it to your sister. Something silly like that, but how important it is it for us to learn that? Our memory verse this month helps us to be able to put others first. And our memory verse this month is Philippians 2, 3. And it goes like this. Read it with me if you can. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. That is a great verse to help us and encourage us to be humble and put others first. Guys, I love you so much. I miss you guys. Can't wait to be together again. But until then, I look forward to seeing you here online and learning about this month, humility and how we can be like Jesus. See you guys later. Have a great week. Bye.